Hey guys, so a lot of you have been asking questions about what kind of um, software and equipment I use to draw and animate. So I made this video to hopefully answer some of those questions, even though there's really only like three that people ask on a regular basis. Um, so yeah, without any further ado, let's go! Welcome to my perspective. Ooh, Dom, how are you doing that? Is the camera in your mouth? How are you talking then? Now I just stuck uh, my webcam in the neck of my hoodie. Okay, so here is my workspace, as you can see. This is my domain, or domain. <laughs> okay, so here's my baby, my raputapu, my laptop. And uh, you probably won't recognize it, but this is the Sager or Sager uh, MP8130 model. And it's actually a gaming laptop, even though it doesn't look like it. But I like it because of its clean design and it performs really well. Uh, I'm not really going to go much into specs because I just want to show you guys that this is my machine. Uh, next question is... What do you use to record your audio? I'm actually using it right now. Uh, this is Audacity. I'm not sure if you can see it, but that's pretty much all I use. It's a free program, so you guys can try it out as well. Uh, in terms of hardware, this is my mic. Give you a closer look. You know, nothing too fancy. I mean, I got it for like $15 or whatever. Um, yeah, not really the best quality, but you know, it it does its job, it suffices. Because the great thing about Audacity is that even if you have a piece of crap mic like me, um, <clears throat> it has this noise cancellation feature, so uh, you can use that to delete any extra noise that your mic um, records, and that generally improves the quality of the audio by a landslide. I mean, like without it, my my audio would be all fuzzy and be like <laughs> with all the noise and whatnot. So yeah, I'm thankful for that. Uh, the next question is probably the biggest and most popular, and it's uh, what do you use to draw? Do you use a tablet? If so, what do you recommend? Um, graphics tablet. I'm not exactly the best person to ask that question because um, honestly, I've only been using one. Uh, graphics tablet ever since I started drawing digitally. I mean, I was um, at an electronics store <clears throat> one day randomly and I came across like these graphic tablets and I'm like, whoa, this this looks cool. This allows me to draw like on my computer. Wow. So me being a cheap Asian, I was like, let me just get the cheapest one and then try it out. And since then, I've still been using it. And this is what I have. Ta -da! This is the Genius Mouse Pen graphics tablet. Um, it came with a mouse, but I mean, like, I don't use it because I already have one. So, uh, give you a closer look. This is the pen sensitive area, and uh, it measures about four by six inches. And uh, at the top has, uh, there's these shortcuts and whatnot, like cut, copy, pasta, undo, and whatever. But I don't use that because um, I'll show you guys the position I like to draw in. <laughs> that sounded sexual, but whatever. <laughs> um, what I like to do is I like to have one hand on my pen just drawing and my other hand on my laptop keys performing the shortcuts and stuff like brush undo and whatever because what i hate doing is having to put my pen down go over to my mouse and then do the task or whatever and then having to go back and pick up my pen and it, i don't know it's a waste of time and it like breaks the momentum of my my work pace so i like to maintain this position with my eyes locked on the screen and just doing whatever because um, 
If it's not obvious by now, I use Adobe Flash. And what's great about it is that it has, it lets you edit the shortcuts. So whatever tools required me to use the mouse and do whatever, I just set it um, as command so that I could just draw and do the commands and just do it. You know, no momentum broken and yeah. So yeah, that's it. That's basically it. Laptop, mic, software, tablets, and whatever. Uh, hopefully that answered the questions. Maybe? Probably not. Oh well. <laughs> Did you think the video was frozen? <laughs> well, not the movie. Uh, or is it? Let it go! Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Domix in the flesh, and I know you haven't seen my face in a while, but here I am, even though this is probably the only time you'll see me in the video and maybe at the end, but the point of the video is so I can update you on what I use to make my videos. Um, some things have changed, some things didn't, but we'll get through that, so just sit back, relax, I don't know if you'll enjoy this, but definitely sit back because standing up is tiring. Okay, let's start. So just to give you a general view of how my setup looks like, you'll definitely notice this new monitor. Which actually isn't just a monitor, but also my tablet. Yay! Wow, Tom, that, that's so cool! Yeah! This is the Unova MSP19U. The... 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 the, the, the what? Dom, I... I, d I only know about Wacoms and Cintiqs, w what is this? Well, if you're a money saver like me, this brand is definitely for you. You know this one of the many competitive tablet alternatives to their more expensive Wacom counterparts. I got this baby for about $600 and while that may sound like a lot, uh, comparing it with the Cintiq 22 inch priced at $2000 or even the Cintiq 13 inch priced at $1000 this is definitely worth it for what it provides. I'm not going to get into detailed specs, but I will leave a link in the description of a few Unova reviews by Frendin. Next up is this seemingly phallic device which is my Samson C03U microphone. It's a multi-pattern USB studio condenser and it allows you to toggle between different input settings such as omnidirectional, unidirectional, lower decibel levels for less noise, etc. Got this for about $100 and was definitely worth the investment for the improved audio recordings. Along with my mic, I also decided to get a pop filter from Amazon. This is the Nady MPF6 and it cost me about 20 bucks. This basically helps minimize the wind noise when I speak so I can do my left voice without having to worry about the sound being distorted. And the final addition to my set would be my smudge guard glove which you've probably seen me wear during my live streams on Twitch. Uh, it's made out of nylon and spandex. You might have seen other artists or left-handed people use this. It's essentially what it's named. Uh, it helps prevent your sweaty hands from dirtying the tablet and also decreases the friction while you're actually drawing. Uh, you can probably make this yourself out of everyday materials, but if you don't trust your sewing abilities, uh, you can buy this for $15 at their website. I'll provide a link in the description. Other than that, everything else is pretty much the same. I still use the same laptop. I still use Audacity to record. Uh, I'm still using Flash. God help me at this crash fest of a program. Uh, what I did fail to mention last time were the programs I used to export animations from Flash. Now I go about this in two ways. If I'm doing a quick export to a video format, I simply use Swivel, which is a free SWF video exporter. I'll provide a link in the description for a free download. If I'm doing a few extra edits to my videos that I can't do in Flash, I like to bring my SWF into Adobe Premiere and export from there. Either way will suffice. And that's pretty much it. Um, I decided to upgrade my equipment because I wanted to improve the quality of my videos along with the efficiency of my process. Uh, again, you can achieve wonders without this kind of equipment, with something less expensive. Um, so don't let this discourage you. If you watched the previous equipment video, you can see that it doesn't really matter what you use, but how you use it. So uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you guys later. Peace.
By the way, just want to remind you of this website called Opinion Outpost in which you can sign up for free and complete a minimum of 3 surveys in order to earn cash, Amazon, and iTunes gift cards. It's a great community and a great opportunity to get awarded. Companies use your opinions on these surveys for their research and improving their products and such. Be sure to check your promotions tab in Gmail to see emails from Opinion Outpost. Link in the description if you want to get started now. Hello everyone and welcome to my work process. I often get many questions like, Hey Dom, how do you make your videos? What do I use to animate? How do I become YouTube famous? Sadly, I can only answer two of those. One, Adobe Animate, and two, get involved in drama. Anyway, here's a summary of my process. I'm excited to also have Skillshare be a sponsor for this video. If you don't already know, Skillshare is a great place where you guys can learn new things with their online classes by getting a two month free trial if you click the link in the description. Alright, so first off, what equipment do I have? What do I use? Well, there's my computer, my two monitors, though one is enough, a Cintiq 13 HD if I'm at home, a Cintiq Pro 16 if I'm at the office, and a Mobile Studio 13 if I'm traveling. Humble flex. I use an Audio-Technica 2020 microphone to record most of my dialogue, and a Samson Meteor when I'm traveling. I use Adobe Animate to, well, animate, and it is here where all the magic happens. I also use Adobe Premiere to master and compile the final scenes and audio if necessary. I still use Audacity to record my voice, Fruity Loop Studio to edit music and other sound effects, Microsoft Word to write my scripts, and Notepad++ to organize a list of scenes and tasks for the video. My tools and equipment have more or less stayed the same for the past 5-ish years. So how does it all start? Well, the projects all begin with an idea, a thought, a joke, a story, anything that inspires content. You guys remember my butts video? I thought of that when I was on the toilet. Once I have an idea, I then get started on the script. This involves everything I want to say along with little notes about specific things I want to include in the animation. Once finalized, I then record the dialogue, usually in the comfort of my bedroom closet. Professional, I know. I then send out a rough audio of what I have to my buddy Chris Carlone, who produces the music you hear in the videos. He does amazing work, and I'll put his info in the description if you want to check him out. While he's working on that, I can already get started and create the main project file in Animate. I work in a 960 by 540 canvas size, and the reason for that is because Animate works in vectors, which means the lines and objects you draw maintain its resolution regardless of its size, as opposed to raster, which distorts and loses detail when manipulated. So it doesn't really matter what size you work in, as long as it's the right ratio. I work in the standard 24 FPS or frames per second, which represent how many frames you see in a given second during playback. The higher the FPS, the smoother the animation of course, but animators typically work with 24. Once you've confirmed that, we are then brought to the animation, animation interface. interface! You can then organize your work panels however you'd like, but this is how I prefer mine. Timeline at the top, tools on the left, canvas in the middle, and everything else like the library, color, and properties to the right. I import my main audio by simply dragging the file into the canvas, automatically placing it in the timeline. Big tip, make sure you go into the audio properties and change the sync to stream if you want to be able to hear it properly. And while I'm at it, I go to my published settings and edit these two to be MP3, 160 kilobytes per second, best quality, and uncheck convert stereo to mono so your audio doesn't sound like doo-doo when you export. And then I go back to the beginning of the timeline and make a new layer. I use this layer to go through the audio and break it apart into scenes, which are then divided by keyframes. I use these keyframes to then write up a task list in Notepad++, of which are distributed amongst the team, including myself. Here's what the recent Dreams video looks like once I've compiled everyone's scenes into one file. I usually end up watching the whole thing at least like 20 times in order to check for mistakes, but despite that, I'm still human and miss things like this. I like to organize everyone's respective layers into their own layer folder so it's easier to tell who did which scenes. I had a ton of help in this video, namely from Aaron, Simon, Ciel, and Jom, along with Elaine McCool and Wolf with that money shot fight scene. For those who have been watching me for some time, you might remember when it was just me making the videos, ooh, versus now when I have a whole team helping me out. 
Here's a bit of a tour through this project file so you can see the amount of work that went into it. Scenes are typically either these, where my character is speaking to the camera, and yeah, everything else that's not that. I have somewhat of a rig for these shots because it's senseless to draw these poses every time. I have a separate file with a bunch of reusable assets like mouths for lip syncing, which I do now by using a plugin called Keyframe Caddy where I can select the mouth poses in quick succession. Yes, there is the built-in frame picker which does the same thing, but I find it a bit laggier. Animate also has a built-in camera, which essentially allows you to easily frame your shots as you please. Here's a bit of what Jom's scene layers and frames look like. As you can see, it's not necessary to draw on every frame. Animating on 2s and even mixing it with 3s and 4s can not only save you time, but allow you to really decide what poses are essential to conveying the intended motions. And here, let me leave you with some of my commonly used shortcuts, other than the obvious ones, which you can edit by going to Edit, Keyboard, Shortcuts. I put Clear and Delete on my tilde or back quote key because I just can't be bothered to reach over to the right side of my keyboard every time I want to delete something. Control 1 zooms the canvas to 100% and Control 2 zooms the canvas to fit the window. I have semicolon to flip horizontally and apostrophe to flip vertically. Alt O to toggle onion skin, Alt M to smooth, Backslash. to straighten, Control K to open the alignment panel which I often use to center things but make sure align to stage is checked. Control Shift V to paste in place which is very important in maintaining positions when copying from a different scene. And finally Control Alt Shift E to expand fill. I typically use these to adjust line weights for consistency. Once we've completed all the animation and we're happy with it, we can then export. But before doing so, we need to temporarily change the project FPS to 23.965 in order to avoid audio desync issues I with the exported video. It's weird, I know. DDR. Be sure to change it back to 24 if you decide to work on the project again. I then export by going to File, Export, Export Video, which opens an output options window. For render size, we can now change it to whatever we want. There's really no need for me to be exporting in 4K, so I go with a high definition 1920 by 1080 Keep this checked because we will need to convert the MOV to an MP4. Once I've selected the folder I want to save it to, I hit export. And once it's done, it'll open Adobe Converter where I then convert the huge ass MOV file to an MP4. Now this is already good to upload, but if I need to add any additional scenes like reference clips or if I need some minor effects tweaking, I can then throw it into Premiere and then export a final video file from there. And then it's just a matter of boom, bam, bop, bada bop, boom, pow. Oh! I hope you guys found this window into my process at least a little interesting and perhaps have gotten some inspiration to go and create something of your own. That's why I'm happy to have Skillshare as a sponsor today, because they really promote the idea of the self-made you. When I first started learning how to animate, I had to scour through the lands of YouTube and Google searches for tutorials and tips and tricks and whatnot, but I wasted a lot of time on some not so helpful ones. It sure would have been great if everything I needed was all in one place. <laughs> well, Skillshare has thousands of catered courses across all kinds of topics like design, business, tech, and more, not just for animation. There is truly something for everyone. As I mentioned in the video, I work in Adobe Animate, and Skillshare has a great intro class for that program called 2D Animation for Beginners with Adobe Animate by Walt Wonderwolk. If any of you are interested in learning basic animation, I recommend you go check it out by using the link below for a 2 month free trial. You could learn a lot in 2 months and I'm curious to see what you all get working on. Let me know what Skillshare courses you're taking in the comments below and if you're feeling proud of something you've made after learning it from a class, I wanna see it. Tweet them at me with the hashtag TYSkillshare and I'll check them out. Again, a free 2 month subscription, less than $10 after that. All the learning you want conveniently in one place with the link below. Enjoy!